Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Welcome back, you wonderful pet parent. Thank you for joining me. This is the Pet Parenting Reset, and I am your host, Jessica L. Fisher. I am a positive reinforcement dog trainer and pet parent coach. Thank you for joining me. Today's topic, we are talking about, oh my God, has my pet food been recalled? Or maybe you are just like, constantly Googling, making sure your pet food hasn't be, been recalled because recalls, recalls, recalls are everywhere. They are always like, uh, now they may not be dominating the news cycle right now because there's a lot of stuff going on, but local news tends to have your back with these recalls. And there are lots of them. There are lots of pet food recalls out there. So I wanna give you some resources in today's episode. And I wanna talk to you um, about some of the reasons why there are so many recalls. Um, of course, it will not be extensive because I'm, yeah, <laughs> this probably would go on forever if this were an extensive list, but I'm gonna give you like a Cliff's Notes of why there are so many pet food recalls. And I wanna just start planting a seed in your head about some options that you have for feeding your pet. We'll go further into detail about feeding your pet in other episodes, but I'm tiptoeing there with you guys, <laughs> okay? I'm tiptoeing there. So really quickly, before we get too far into the podcast, I do want to say thank you for joining me. I want to remind you to give the podcast a follow. And if at any point during any of these episodes you are enjoying what you are listening to, I hope you give a five-star review on whatever podcast network you listen on, uh, be it Spotify or Apple or Google or wherever else you choose to get your podcasts from. I would really, um, I really very much appreciate it because the more reviews we can get, the more five-star reviews we can get, these platforms will suggest the podcast to other people and that's how we make a difference, right? That's how we make waves is by reaching more and more people. So sharing the podcast, giving it a five-star review, that's going to be the some of the best ways that we can help as many pet parents as possible. And that's what we're here for. The Pet Parenting Reset is all about different methods for pet parenting success. So we need to reach as many pet parents as possible. So I recently, I don't often post about recalls on social media because I mean, literally when a recall comes out, it's like everybody is posting about it. Why do I need to be one more person? But I did recently post a recall uh, at the beginning of August. There was yet another recall for dog food that had high levels of vitamin D. This is not the first time this type of recall has happened. Um, it may have been the first time for this particular brand of pet food, um, but <laughs> I'm gonna start out by giving you a quick overview. There's, there are lots of pet foods out there, but there are three main companies that put out the majority of pet foods. This is not all pet foods, but the majority of pet foods. One of the biggest ones, is Mars. Uh, so Mars, as you probably know, is most commonly associated with being a candy company. So while Mars has traditionally been known as a candy company, they really are a pet company now because a number of years ago, probably like five or six years ago, they have started making more money in pet products and pet food than they do with candy. So um, that's just one of the instances, just so we kind of get an idea of where we're at. We're not looking at a bunch of mom and pop um, pet food companies, right? We are looking at huge, big conglomerates that just happen to have started making, they have realized that there is big money in pets 
and providing food. And by the way, <laughs> these companies have also gotten into healthcare, so they are putting in lots of vet clinics and the pets, you know, big name pet stores. These are not, these are also not your mom and pop vet clinics. Um, so, but let's, let's stick with the topic of recalls and pet food. So here's the deal with pet food. And I'm just gonna give you like a thousand foot view. We can go into more detail about this in later episodes, but I wanna just kind of put a little seed in your head to think about. So the thousand foot view is that pet food is primarily made with, now this again, does not apply to a lot of the smaller companies, but the big, big, big companies uh, yeah, this definitely applies to. They are taking scraps. They are taking anything not fit for human consumption. They are taking animals that have been dead in a pasture. They are taking animals that died of cancer. They are taking animals that have been euthanized. Yes, they have euthanization. Euthanasia drugs in their bodies. They are taking all of these protein protein quote sources they are they anything not fit for human consumption and that the, that that runs a gamut right we can think of some really terrible things happening um, with these animals they're taking all of that now don't get me wrong we need to do something <laughs> like we can't just let these animals sit there and rot like they you know we do need to do something about what's going on but um unfortunately this is a side effect and if you're watching the, the video you're seeing my little qu quotation hands um a side effect of industrialization not that i'm saying industrialization is bad but we have taken it a little too far um we as a society are not valuing the lives of the animals we're raising uh, for food. And so unfortunately bad things happen. But all of this that would otherwise be waste material uh, in, in from human farming goes into pet food. Um, now, in addition to that, there are some, you know, maybe vegetables like corn let's say, or um, legumes or whatever it may be, wheat that is put into pet food. Now, the storage of these products is also pretty abysmal, uh, which is why we have aflatoxin um, in a lot of pet food, which I have done a video on in the past, but it is a uh, can be deadly uh, mold that grows specifically um, in a lot of corn and then I think some wheat. Don't quote me on that one, but definitely in corn um, when it's stored, uh, like dry storage. But let's talk about the vitamin D recall because that was the most recent one. They take these ingredients, right? And the protein sources, they render down. There's a process called high heat rendering and generally, they will go through three, sometimes four cycles of these high heat rendering processes. And what happens is this high heat rendering is going to take that biological matter, that protein source, whatever it may have been, and it is going to cook the living daylights out of it over and over and over again until you wind up with a powder-like substance that can be stored uh, as dry storage, right? So at the end of this process, you have, you have a denatured product, right? Um, that was a poor quality to begin with. And there is little to no nutritional value left in that because of the high heat processing that has been through over and over and over again. You take all of this, <laughs> the protein that has been rendered down the dry ingredients, whether that is corn or wheat or whatever it may be, you take these and you combine them together 
and you're left with a product that doesn't have a whole lot of nutrition in it. So what these companies have to do is they have to add vitamins and minerals back into it. Now, the majority of these companies are buying what are called pre-mixes, and that is a mixture that has already been combined together of all of the necessary vitamins and minerals to meet AFCO minimum nutrition standards so that they can put this product out on the shelf and say that it meets all of the nutrition requirements for your dog as, as decided by AFCO, which is in America, our regulatory body for pet food. I'm using a lot of like quotation fingers <laughs> in the video if, if you're watching on or if you're listening to the podcast and not watching the video, which is totally fine, but I am using a lot of quotation fingers. Anyway, um, so these pre-mixes that are being added back in to add back in all of the nutrient requirements that your dog or cat needs, many, if not most, of them come out of China. Here's the deal. These companies, and I'm not gonna call out any name brand in this video, but these companies you know, tell whatever company they're buying the premix from, this is the requirement that we need in the premix. Uh, this is, you know, the, of the, all the vitamins and minerals that we need. It gets made and shipped over here. Now, according to AFCO standards, these companies, when they get the premix, they're supposed to test it to make sure it's accurate. Once they have the final product, they're supposed to again test it to make sure it is meeting the minimum nutrient requirements and that there's nothing you know, lethal in it. Well, these companies have admitted that they are not doing that, which is why we continually, year after year after year, get vitamin D recalls because these premixes are coming over and they are not what they're supposed to be. And that's really unfortunate, but all of these reasons put together, and you can see I've touched on a few different things, talking about poor meat quality. So when we're thinking about all of these dogs um, having sensitivities, a lot of people call them allergies to proteins. Let's think about the quality of that protein that they're getting, and it's absolutely no wonder why this is happening. We're talking about the dry food storage, corn, wheat, legumes, whatever it may be, and the uh, storage problems that these companies are obviously having and they're not testing so that the aflatoxins and you know molds and all of these toxins are, are rampant in these products going into your pet food. So there are those recalls as well. And then the premix recalls and all the vitamins and minerals that are not in balance, right? So put all of these together and you can see why there are so many recalls. Now let me tell you something else that I haven't talked about, and those are salmonella recalls. Now, big pet food, big pet food, they like to call out raw food for having salmonella. <laughs> Guess what? You give me a bag of kibble and you give me a raw pet food, and you know what's gonna have more salmonella in it? more than likely that kibble bag is going to have more salmonella in it. There have been more salmonella recalls in kibble than anything else. And by the way, the reason that salmonella is a concern is not our dogs or our cat, it's us. Now, if you wash your hands after preparing your dog's or cat's food, then you're not gonna have a problem with salmonella. Um, yeah, wash your hands, guys. But that's, that's just, that's the deal. That's what's going on. There are more salmonella recalls in kibble. They just, you know, they have better PR. Um, they have more money to put into PR <laughs> is the reality of the situation. So um, I think we've talked about quite a few different like avenues that, you know, that thousand foot view I was talking about. We haven't gone into too terribly much detail, though I would love to go into more detail about it. Um, but that's the thousand foot view of why there are so many recalls uh, in pet food. Now, there is a resource that I would love for you to check out. It's the truth about pet food. And I'm actually gonna go and about, I'm gonna Google it 
right now, and if you're watching me on the video, you're seeing me <laughs> Google this. The truth about pet food is actually, let's get rid of the, it's truthaboutpetfood.com. If you put the in before it, you are not going to get to the right um, URL because Big Pet Food is trying really hard to um, discredit and, and take over the, the news feed about pet food. Now, Susan Thixton runs Truth About Pet Food and it all started with her dog getting sick many years ago. And let me tell you, if there is something going on in the pet food industry, she is on top of it and she is the very first person that I go to um, to find out what is going on, especially if it has to do with a recall yeah, she is on top of it. I definitely hope you check out truthaboutpetfood.com. And honestly, she doesn't know who I am and she doesn't know that I am mentioning her website in my podcast or anywhere else. And um, yeah, that's just how much I think she is uh, just amazing. There is, let me see here. So her website is 100% supported by pet owners so there is a donation program on her website you do not have to donate anything to get the information on her website but it does help her out so i definitely hope you check out that resource and even if you just start reading she she puts so much work into the information she puts out to help educate consumers about what they are buying and what they are putting into their pets bodies it is definitely worth uh, checking it out so i also promised you some recommendations of uh, what you could do about all these recalls the very first thing is to educate yourself and um you know you've already started by listening to this podcast which is absolutely wonderful but when i first realized that kibble was not how my dogs needed to eat um, when I first figured out it's not how my cats needed to eat I started the home cooked route now if you're interested in home cooking for your dog um, what is her name the crock pet diet dr. Ruth I don't want to get her name wrong, maybe Ruth Roberts. Dr. Ruth has the Croc Pet Diet, which is wonderful. Dr. Judy Morgan, ugh, if I could talk, Dr. Judy Morgan has um, Home Cooking 101, I think it's called, uh, to cook at home for your dog. So those are some of the ones that I recommend for home cooking. Now, if you want to just go ahead and take that leap and say, you know what, my dog needs a raw diet. Um, of course, there are there are really great raw, commercially available raw diets. Um, one of the ones that I recommend for people starting out is Darwin's because they deliver to your house. But there are also some really great companies that you can find locally. I am so excited in anticipation of Cure coming out, K-U-R-E. Um, I really like need once that is available to the public i'm i'm all on it um small batch is great the bones and co is great steve's real food is great there are so many wonderful companies out there that you can absolutely get a great diet for your dog but if you're one of those hands-on diy people you can do that too um, you can check out keep the tail wagging she has kimberly has a blog about feeding your dogs or her blog is about feeding her dogs but you can extrapolate that information um, onto your dogs as well but if you need a like step-by-step -step course uh, dog dad has raw feeding 101 which is all wonderful now if you want the links for any of this you can check out uh, my link tree which you can get to by going to the show notes, which is at my website, jessicaalfisher.com. Um, I definitely recommend, and this is what I recommend, is to take control of your pet's diet. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end today's podcast because I don't want to completely explode your brain, especially if this is something absolutely new to you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want your head to just explode because I know like at the very beginning, uh, mine could have exploded very easily as well. So that's the thousand foot view. 
I know there were lots of nuggets in here that you might even want more information on or want to have a conversation about. So I hope to see you. I hope to welcome you as part of the family over on Patreon. Check out all of the exclusive content over there and become part of the conversation about any of the podcast episodes that go up uh, by becoming a family member over there on Patreon or a PAC member. Maybe we should be PAC members. What do you think? I don't know. I want to come up with something that is inclusive with both dogs and cats. So ugh, I got to put my thinking cap on. But if you have a, a suggestion, then go for it. You know, a lot of, I'm not a celebrity by any means, but you know, celebrities, their fans often like name their like followers <laughs> and they come up with their own name. So I don't know, maybe, maybe one day, right? But anyway. Thanks so much for being here. I do hope you check out, um, if, you, if you want to check out the video of the podcast, you can find it on Rumble and YouTube. You can also, if you don't wanna listen on any of the major networks, you can listen to it on my website, jessicaelfisher.com. Um, like we talked about at the beginning, I do hope you give a five-star review to the podcast. That is one of the best ways to get this information out to other pet parents, which is why we're here is to help pets and their parents um, by using different methods for pet parenting success. That's what the Pet Parenting Reset is all about. And you are such an amazing pet parent. I know that because you're here, you're listening, you are engaging, and we just want to get out there to more wonderful pet parents. So I hope you share the podcast and give it a five-star review. Thank you so much for being here. Give your dog and cat a hug and kiss from me and continue being that wonderful pet parent you are. I will talk to you next week. Bye. <coughs>